at the end of August 2022, Google Research and Boston University gave us Dream Booth, a fine-tuned text-to-image diffusion model. They're using Google Imagine as the base here. This is a really cool model. The paper is actually nice and short, so we'll probably do a, a short video as well, but there were some amazing examples. So even though we're in AI summer and things have been moving quite quickly, I've taken a bit of time to go back to this one from the 25th of August and play with it now in the middle of September. Have a look at this photo. This photo is a stock photo from unsplash.com. I believe it's a chow chow and it's a uh, very, very high resolution. As an example, Google took the Imagine model, fine-tuned it with this photo. You can fine-tune it with three to five photos and then asked the Dream Booth fine-tuned result to come out with a chow chow in different positions. Here we go. What about a cross of a dog and a bear? Using the original image there to play around with what that might look like. A cross of a dog and a panda. Again, using the original image from Unsplash, but extrapolating that out, conceptualizing what that might look like. A cross of a dog and a koala. Super appropriate for Australia. A cross of a dog and a lion. This is a cross of a dog and a hippo. So you can see it's quite powerful. Once again, this is not anything like Photoshop. During the training process, it discards all the images. It can't get back to the original 800 million images that it saw during training. It's essentially an artist. It's conceptualizing what this might look like. Note that Google Imagine is probably one of the smaller models compared to Google Party, compared to Stable Diffusion, compared to Mid Journey. It's just a little bit bigger than Dolly 2, and of course it's closed, so we do not have access to it. But it's a really interesting model to play around with for fine tuning, and Google Research quite rightly used it as the basis for fine tuning here. It's got quite a few superpowers. One thing these text image models can do is conceptualize things that don't exist, things that they've never seen. It can essentially use its intelligence to come up with what that might look like. So the Google research team fine-tuned the model on a picture of cats that looked a little bit like this. And then they asked it, what would that cat look like from the top? What would the cat look like from the bottom? And what would the cat look like from the side and from the back? Note there that the fine-tuned input images never featured the cat from these different angles, especially the cat seen from the back. In the paper, Google Research says, we highlight that the model has not seen the specific cat from behind, from below, or from above, yet it is able to extrapolate knowledge from the class prior to generating these novel views, given only four frontal images of the subject. One of the main features of this kind of fine tuning is that you can completely personalize the images that get spat out. Have a look at this one. Again, we're fine tuning on three pictures of a particular dog, and then we're able to generate that dog using a prompt, asking it to conceptualize images in the styles of different artists from Vincent van Gogh through to Leonardo da Vinci. This concept of personalization is gonna be really, really cool when we're creating life when we're creating virtual realities from scratch, conceptualizing them, imagining them, and bringing them to life. I didn't actually know until very recently that your Netflix, my Netflix platform, is already personalized. I see a different cover for movies than you see. How cool is that? So for example, the Stranger Things cover, here's nine different examples. And depending on which genre you prefer or what your personalization settings are like, based again on AI, it will decide which movie preview poster it shows you when you're scrolling through and trying to select a movie. How cool is that? Here's an example, Goodwill Hunting the movie. If you really like romance, 
If you like uh, romantic comedies, rom-coms, you'll probably get that image at the top. If you like comedies, like clean comedies, maybe even a little bit of action or a little bit of controversy, you'll get the image down the bottom. Completely different movie posters. Here's the high resolution of those for romance and the high resolution of those for comedy. If you like Robin Williams, obviously it will pick Robin Williams to show to you. Let's try some more personalization. Let's bring the Chow Chow back. We'll feed three images of the Chow Chow in and then we'll ask the model to generate different outfits based on the prompt. So here you see the Chow Chow wearing everything from a chef outfit to angel wings, that poor little guy. A reminder that none of these images actually exist. The model is essentially dressing, creating, designing the output of this. They don't exist in the stock photos or any of the training images. It is imagining them and coming up with those in about one, two, three seconds. This is really, really fast stuff. Here's one more example. Let's give it a clean input of a silver car and then ask it to generate different colors of that same car. Once again, I know I repeat myself on this one. This is not Photoshop. Have a close up here on the yellow and the blue car. See that the hood ornaments are different. The license plate is different. Even the lights are different. So it's not that it's gone and changed colors of the silver car. It has essentially created five new cars conceptualized from scratch. This fine tuning of text to image models of very large text to image models is already happening. So Google here have previewed it by fine tuning Imagine 860 million training photos to get to that model. And they've called this fine tuned example Dream Booth, but you can actually already go and play with it in public with stable diffusion. You can either use that online or you can download that and run it yourself on an M1 Mac or even on a Windows machine. This is a really exciting model. Uh, keep up to date with me. I've got some really exciting things coming up. I'll be speaking at Bond University very shortly to a bunch of lawyers. I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to look at how the large language models like GPT-3 are able to be applied to the law. So I'll be playing around with legalese to English and vice versa. We'll have a look at the Ruth Bader Ginsburg tuning of Jurassic 1 by AI21 and a few other things. If you're coming to DevOx, I'd love to see you there. There's going to be 4,000 developers there. The tickets are actually a thousand euro plus. I forgot to add in taxes. Uh, but of course, if you want to have <laughs> a less expensive version of that, I'll invite you to join the memo where I push out a bi-weekly or a monthly version of what's going on in the AI world. If you stayed around to the end of the video, I've got a little surprise here. This is one of the slides that I'm using for the keynotes, either at Bond or DevOx. I think it's a really incredible example of what's happening with these text image models. Here it is. On the left here is the original Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci circa 1500s. And then we feed that model to Dolly 2 and ask it to outpaint the entire canvas and we get something that looks like this, thanks to user Jeremiah Peterson from Reddit, who created this in July, 2022. It's the Mona Lisa uncropped. I'd love to have you as a reader of the memo.